Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take this opportunity to present you with another word of encouragement. Now, if you're ready for some incredible news, well, you might like to know that it was just this last Thursday on September the 15th, 2022, when five unblemished red heifers were delivered to the cargo terminal of the Ben Gurion Airport there in Tel Aviv, Israel. And in order to understand why this is such exciting news, uh, we must take a moment to consider the instructions that the Lord presented to Moses in Numbers chapter 19. It's there where we learn that the people of Israel, they were required to acquire a red heifer without blemish or defect. Not only that, but it was also required that the red heifer was too young for a yoke and had never, you know, borne a burden. And according to the Lord, the high priest was required to then slaughter this red heifer outside the camp. And then he would sprinkle the blood of this red heifer seven times directly in front of the tabernacle of meeting for the purpose of cleansing. In this way, the tabernacle would then be purified for the service of the Lord. And not only that, but the high priest was also instructed to burn the hide, the flesh, the blood, the offal, and, and everything, along with uh, cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet. And then the ashes of all of this would be collected and then stored outside the camp in a clean place. And the reason for this was because these ashes would then be uh, used for the water, uh, water of purification, which would then be used to purify those who were ceremonially unclean. Uh, at the same time, it's also believed that the ashes of a red heifer are necessary for cleansing the altar of the new temple. And this is especially after Temple Mount has repeatedly been defiled by Gentile leaders throughout the ages. For example, it was in 135 AD when Hadrian built a temple to Jupiter on the Temple Mount there, which included two statues of Roman emperors. Uh, and also in 692 AD, uh, Muslims completed the construction of a shrine, which is now known to us as the Dome of the Rock. And this structure includes an interior inscription that literally denies the divine nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then by 705 AD, the Muslims also built the Al-Aqsa Mosque which is there on Temple Mount. And, and while it's true that this mosque has been destroyed by earthquakes several times since it was first built, the worshipers of Allah continue repairing and restoring it. And as we consider all the different ways that the Temple Mount has been defiled since the days when the Second, second Temple was destroyed in 70 AD, well, there should be no doubt that Temple Mount must be cleansed with the blood and the ashes of another red heifer. And with that being the case, well, I can't help but to get excited about the five red heifers that were just shipped from Texas to Israel. And, and according to the reports, these five cows have been inspected by rabbis and were found to be both red and unblemished. Simply put, they're ritually pure for sacrifice as stipulated under the law of Moses. It's also interesting to note that there was a rabbi in the 11th century named Mamamides who assured the Jews that the 10th red heifer would actually be sacrificed by the Messiah himself. That's what he believed. And that's interesting, especially as we consider the rabbinical tradition, which reveals that there have already been nine red heifers sacrificed since the days of Moses. That being the case, many Jews actually believe that the Messiah is going to be the one to sacrifice this next or 10th red heifer. And with that being the case, I can't help but to wonder if the 10th red heifer will actually be sacrificed by the false Messiah who is better known as the Antichrist. I'll remind you, the Antichrist is the globalist leader who will be embraced by the world as a sort of savior. And then three and a half years after he enforces a treaty between the state of Israel and her enemies, that's when he will exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped as he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. In other words, there's coming a day when the son of perdition, the Antichrist, will defile the third temple as he enters the Holy of Holies and there pro proclaims himself to be God. Well, knowing that the red heifer must be uh, first sacrificed and, and used for the cleansing of Temple Mount, uh, and knowing that this red heifer must be a young, unblemished cow that has never carried a burden, I can't help but to wonder, uh, are we about to witness the sacrifice of this 10th red heifer? And with this question in mind, you might be interested to know that, you know, in one week, uh, which is uh, next Monday, September the 26th, the children of Israel will be celebrating Rosh Hashanah. And just to be clear, Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. And not only that, but religious Jews believe that this is both the birthday of the entire universe, as well as the day that God created Adam and Eve. 
It's also interesting to note that the northern faction of the Islamic movement is also gearing up for Rosh Hashanah. As a matter of fact, the deputy head of this terrorist organization has already made threats by promising Arab riots on Rosh Hashanah if the Jews blow the shofar and bring animal sacrifices to Temple Mount. That's right. The Arabs don't want the Jews blowing their shofar and they don't want them bringing the red heifer to Temple Mount because according to them, this will desecrate the Al-Aqsa Mosque. That's right. They believe that their, their sacrifices will desecrate their mosque. And, and, and then this, uh, this, Jew, uh, this, um, this Muslim leader warns the Jews about blowing the shofar and wearing priestly clothing, which is going to result in riots because according to him, the Al-Aqsa Mosque will never be the temple and it will remain in Muslim hands. That's right. The deputy head of the northern faction of the Islamic movement is extremely concerned about the religious Jews who are clearly preparing for their third temple. And I have no doubt that the arrival of the red heifer just before Rosh Hashanah has put them on high alert. And with all this in mind, Let's pray for the peace of Israel. Let, let's pray as they prepare to celebrate their new year that there won't be these riots. And, and, and as we pray, let's consider the traditional Rosh Hashanah prayer that's offered every year uh, by religious Jews. And this prayer is stated in this way. We recall the time that God revealed himself on Mount Sinai as he gave us the Torah. The whole world trembled at your presence. Creation shook in awe before you when you, our king, did reveal yourself on Mount Sinai to give your people the Torah and its commandments, letting them hear your majestic voice, your holy words out of the flashes of fire. Amid thunder and lightning did you reveal yourself to them. Amid the sound of the shofar did you appear to them. The shofar will be blown during the final battles of Israel with its enemies. It will be sounded when our exile Exiles return. It will be sounded when the temple will be rebuilt. It is the sound signifying the presence of the majesty of God. We ask that it be sounded again with the arrival of the Mashiach. Christian, listen, th this traditional Rosh Hashanah prayer, which is going to be proclaimed next Monday by religious Jews all over the world, this is an, an incredible prayer about the rebuilding of the temple and the arrival of the Mashiach or the Messiah. And as they look forward to this third temple and the arrival of the Mashiach or Messiah, let's pray that they'll begin to realize that the Lord Jesus is the Messiah. The Lord Jesus is the Mashiach. And, and with that, let's pray for the Jews that they might realize who their Messiah actually is. And let's also pray for the Muslims who are also preparing to riot next Monday. That let's pray that they might open their eyes and realize that the Lord Jesus is in fact the only begotten Son of God. Let's pray for the salvation of the Israelites as well as the Muslims. And, and finally, let's pray that the church will recognize the incredible time in which we live so that we might get out there and become those believers who are fighting the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.